Hey, what's going on everyone? Vega here for Serpent X Tech, and today we'll be taking a look at this old Antminer S9. This is actually a client or a, a uh, patient of my wife uh, who went up to the doctor's office to go get the medical marijuana card, and she advised of my channel, and so they brought her this to see if we could get it uh, revived. Now these ASICs are not particularly profitable. They're older generation ASICs, but there are some things and optimizations that one can do. I've seen people use a single hash board to solo mine Bitcoin, just like you might see with, for example, the Apollo BTC miners, right? Low hash rate, not drawing too much energy, but a chance at winning a Bitcoin block. And um, if we talk to our colleagues in the space, you know, Crypto Mikel as well, Swapping out this control board for a more efficient or better control board might be another way they could go if they really wanted to get these things up and running. Not sure what is, go is going on here with this fan. Uh, that looks like caulk. I'm not sure if something broke or what. Uh, but first things first, we need to kind of partially tear it down, try to clean it up, get everything ready to go. Uh, then grab a power supply and breakout board. But I want to make sure these fans work. So I got a splitter connected to the motherboard and I'm going to plug them in front and back and see if the fans work off rip. To get to the control board, we just got these three connectors and then these uh, metal retention that we pull back on and we could pull that out. Obviously, it's gonna hit these power connectors or the end of the uh, boards themselves, the hash boards. So I won't be able to pull it all the way out, but at least I could see um, in there and, and get some cleaning done on this particular device. So let's hook up the fans first and then go from there. Yeah, so the front fan doesn't work at all. Doesn't look like there's anything stopping it from spinning. It's just not getting power. Not sure what happened here. Uh, obviously, this is a custom like 3D printed vent or funnel. Um, but yeah, it's plugged in all the way. This connector works, but it's just not powering on the fan. So now let's do the rear one. Yep, the rear one works. It's just power cycling very rusted back there so we need to clean that off with a brass uh, brush and see what we could get maybe it's not getting enough power because it's coming off of the four pin off of a motherboard instead of the control board we'll see uh, what happens when we actually power everything up with all 10 six pins populated but let's keep cleaning for now So real quick teardown, the chassis is very nasty and dusty, so gonna clean that off real good. There's even a little bug in there, if you can see it. Um, ribbon cables, one of them on the control board was like not even plugged in all the way, really weird. Um, here's the actual control board. Looks like we got, yep, Xilinx which is the standard control board for this thing. Got some part numbers and model numbers that we can see at. Model C, TRL, C41, version 1.18. And, you know, some of the, the contacts on here got corrosion a little bit, not a lot, a little bit. So we're going to uh, clean that up with a soft bristle brush. That fan grill is in bad shape or rough shape. So we're gonna clean that up as well. Just get all this cleaned up, polished up. And the actual boards themselves don't look too bad. 
and I say they don't look too bad, but they, you know, like here we got some corrosion, not sure what that is. Um, front side of the board looks meh, uh, but the back side looks really good. I don't know which side is front and which side is back. But we got model number S9 version hash V2.42 on this one. Uh, this one's Hashboard 63 version 2.4. Uh, a little bit of corrosion on the connector there. Not too bad. This side looks, the back side or the front side, whichever side you want to call this side that we're looking at right now, looks really good. It's the other side that doesn't look so good. So, gonna take some isopropyl alcohol um, and just clean up, you know, various components. Try to clean up some of this corrosion, blow it out, and kind of go from there. Put everything back together and see. I did see that one of these six pins looked a little bit burnt. I'm going to see which one it is. I think it might be this one. Yeah, so right here, this top pin looks kind of rough. You can see that. So yep, soft bristle brush, a little bit of rubbing alcohol, and a blower to blow all this stuff out, clean off the boards, and especially clean off the chassis. We're one fan down, even though this thing spins, um, it's not getting enough power. Maybe we'll plug it in and see when it's connected to the control board instead of the, uh, you know, uh, four pin on the motherboard, which may not be able to provide enough power. This chassis is really dirty as you just saw that dust hit the floor. So let me go ahead and clean those up right now and I'll put this thing back together and we'll see if it powers on and if we can detect it. So before I finish putting everything back in, I got this last board. These grooves that these boards go into uh, were really crusted. Like this is still kind of grody. It would need like a serious acid etching uh, type of compound, maybe some CLR. Uh, but everything is cleaned up as good as it, it can be. I'm going to leave this fan off. It does seem like it's dead. Uh, but just to show you the difference between you know, what it looked like before compared to now. It's at least somewhat better. Going to restore some of that airflow. Um, and we're going to put it on the front side, blowing air through the system. Try to keep these chips cool for now. Just going to put everything back together and hopefully bring you back with it running or not running. At least some sort of status update. But just going to put this last board in, connect all the connectors put the face plates on and then go from there. And then we got all 10 cables that we need 
and a power supply with a breakout board. All right, part one of the moment of truth. Uh, got all the cables ran, powering the control board, and obviously each hash board. Only when one fan in the front. You could see I used Rust-Oleum. I kind of sanded it down a little bit and used Rust-Oleum to try to bring back some life to that grill. Uh, not that it really matters. You could just replace those grills, they're cheap. Uh, got a power supply from uh, Red Panda Mining, 1200 watt HP DPS 1200 something FSB, and then a breakout board. Uh, so all we gotta do is power it on, but then obviously make sure that it shows up on the network. So let's test that out now. Kind of have it sitting here jankily on a stool. So, so far so good. Not getting any network connectivity or lights or anything though. The control board is getting power. We're at 12 volts, 48 watts. I think the control board, if anything, might be bad. But let's give it some time and see. Nope, there we go. We got Ethernet lights. All right, good. Want to make sure that both hash boards are picking up or all three. I don't think there's a light that I can see from the top. Let's look at it from the back. Yep, there we go. There we go. Sitting at 74 watts, 77 watts, 76. I can feel the airflow coming out the back here. Now will it ramp up? Let's go find it on the network and get it hashing on a pool because it might be on an old pool. All right, according to that noise, we are hashing away successfully. There were a couple things that I needed to do. There was a fault that we needed to address. And who says your 1200 watt power supply from Red Panda Mining can't go above that? 1300 watts, 14 terahash. Uh, first things first, the firmware was from 2016, I want to say, 2016, somewhere in there. So I needed to update that uh, using the Bitmain website, just got the latest version. I backed up the config on the upgrade page and then loaded up the config to whatever the previous owner had originally. And we can see under the minor status, I got a couple concerns here. Uh, one board is at 82 and another board is at 80. We do only have one fan on here. And that was one of the faults is because that second fan is dead, we need to trick it. So I just grabbed an old um, Bitmain dummy adapter or a fan uh, adapter to, to make it think there was another fan and we are up and running hashing away. I don't want to run this long term at 1300 watts because obviously that's a thousand watts over what it's rated for on 240 or 220 volt. So we're not going to run it 24 seven, but just wanted to run a stability test, make sure everything is working and good to go with a firmware update, a dummy adapter, uh, and a good cleaning. We got this ASIC, this old S9 up and running. Uh, right now, you'll only be making around, well, you're not making anything, but you are earning Bitcoin, negative $2.50 a day, almost $900 a year. Uh, so a lot of people do not get these, obviously, but they are out there floating around. You gotta be careful with the thermals as well. You do not want these chips running at 95 degrees Celsius. So if I were to put this in a garage, That'd be bad news bears here in Florida. So instead, uh, it's gonna be chilling inside for a little bit. You know, sitting between 65 to 88 is good, but if you're like 90, 95, um, consistently 24 seven, just be careful. And honestly, what I've seen people do with these boards is uh, essentially take the boards out and have them running by themselves uh, just one single board and that basically is comparable to the Apollo BTC miner so they're solo mining with one hash board from Nest 9 and doing just fine that way but that's gonna do it for this video thank you so much for hanging out with us today uh, sorry for the long form video but uh, do me a favor on the way out hit the like button make sure to get subscribed hit the notification bell to stay up to date as well as check out some of the links in the description to help support the channel and what we do here and I'll catch you all in the next one. Take care.